What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining to you exactly what computer networking is. So let's get into it. If you're watching this video right now, then you're connected to a network. Now, whether you're on your phone, tablet or desktop, browsing at a coffee shop at work or from your couch at home, you're a part of a global web of devices that are communicating with each other. And that's the magic of computer networking. But what exactly is computer networking? How does it work behind the scenes and why should anyone care, especially if you're not planning to become an IT professional? Well, that's what we're going to unpack today. So let me go ahead and break all of this down for you. All right. So at its core, computer networking, this is the practice of connecting multiple computing devices together so they can not communicate and share data. So think of it like a digital conversation between machines. These devices, whether they're laptops, smartphones, servers, printers, or even smart refrigerators, they are connected either physically with cables or wirelessly using radio waves. And they talk to each other using network protocols, which are kind of like digital languages. So what's the goal? Well, they share resources and data efficiently. And here are just a few everyday examples of networking in action. So every time you send an email from your phone to your coworker's laptop, that's networking. When you're streaming Netflix on your smart TV, that's networking. If you're saving a file on Google Drive and accessing it later from another device, that's networking. Or if you're printing a document wirelessly from your phone to your home computer, that is networking. So without networking, all of that stuff that I just said would be impossible. All right, so let's go over a quick history of networking. So believe it or not, computer networking has been around for decades. So here's a brief timeline. Well, back in the 60s, the U.S. Department of Defense, they developed what is called ARPANET, and this was the earliest form of networking that eventually led to the Internet. Then as we hit the 1980s, this was the rise of local area networks or lands that were found in schools and offices. Then we hit the 1990s, and this was the explosion of the World Wide Web and home Internet access. Matter of fact, I got Internet access installed in my house in 1994, my freshman year in high school. And then we move into the 2000s all the way to the present. And this is where we have wireless networking like Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, cloud computing, and the Internet of Things. So basically from dial-up modems to fiber optics internet connections, we've essentially come a long way. Now let's talk about the various types of computer networks that you may come across. So we're going to break down some of the basic types of networks that you probably heard of and some that you may not have heard of. So the first one is called a LAN or a local area network. And this is a network that connects devices in small local areas like a home, or office, or a school. And basically, it allows devices to share files, printers, and access the internet locally. And then you have what is called a wide area network. And this is a network that spans a large geographical area. And the internet itself this is considered to be the biggest WAN in existence. Now, why does this matter? Well, it connects users across the country or across the globe. Then we have what is called a wireless LAN. And this is a LAN that uses Wi-Fi instead of cables. And most home networks, they use this so that you can walk around with your laptop or phone and access the internet. Then you have what is called a MAN or a metropolitan area network. And this is a network that covers a city or a large campus. And this is used by city governments or large corporations to connect multiple buildings. And then you have what is called a PAN or a personal area network. And this is a small network for personal devices. So think of your Bluetooth between your phone and your wireless earbuds. And why does this matter? Well, it helps connect all of your personal technology together. And then you have what is called a SAN. And this is a storage area network. And this is a specialized high-speed network for data storage. Now, why does this matter? Well, big organizations, they use this to store massive amounts of data efficiently. All right, so now that you know what networks are, let's talk about how they're built. So every network needs a few key components. And one of the components is obviously that of a device, also known as a node. And these are the actual gadgets and machines on the network, such as your computers, your phones, printers, routers, servers, etc. Then you also need what is called a NIC or a network interface card. So each device needs a network interface, which could be a physical Ethernet port or a wireless chip. And this is how you connect to the network. Then you have what is called a router. And a router, this connects multiple devices to the internet and helps direct traffic between different networks. And then you have what is called a switch. And switches, they are like smart power strips. They connect multiple devices within the same LAN and ensure that data is sent only to the intended device. 
You also have cables and wireless signals. So data, it travels over ethernet cables, fiber optics, or radio waves, such as Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for cellular connections. And then you have protocols, and these are the rules and languages that devices use to talk to each other. And the most important one is called TCP IP, or Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol. All right, so let's go over a simplified explanation of how data actually travels. So when you send a message over a network, this is what's really happening. So let's say that you send a WhatsApp message to your friend across town. Well, here's how all this happens. First thing, your phone breaks the message into small packets, and each packet is then labeled with destination information and is sent through the internet. The packet travels through the routers and switches, hopping from one network to another, then your phone's friend receives the packet and reassembles them, and then boom, the message appears on their screen. And guess what? All of that happens within a split second. That's basically how network communication takes place. All right, so there are two main ways to connect a network. You have what is called a wired network, and this uses Ethernet or fiber optic cables. It's more stable and it has faster speeds, and this is ideal for offices, gaming, or video editing setups. And then you have wireless networks, and these use radio waves like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 4G, and 5G. It's more convenient and it's mobile, but it's slightly less stable, but it's improving constantly. Now, most modern homes, they use a hybrid setup. They have Ethernet for desktops and Wi-Fi for pretty much everything else. All right, so next let's talk about an IP address. So every device on the network needs a unique IP address, and these are kind of like digital home addresses. So basically, this is how the data knows where to go. And there are two versions. You have IP version four. Now this is still widely used, but it's running out of unique addresses. And then you have IP version six. This is the newer version with way more available addresses. And your phone, laptop, smart speaker, or whatever device that you have that connects to the internet, all of them have an IP address. All right, so let's move on and talk about network security. So with great connectivity, comes great responsibility. So network security, this is a huge part of modern networking and without it, anyone could snoop on your data, hack into your devices or infect your system with malware. And so here's how we go about protecting networks. First thing we have are these devices called firewalls and they act like bouncers where they block unwanted traffic. Then we have encryption. This scrambles data so only authorized parties can use it and is typically used in VPNs and HTTPS websites. You have what is called authentication. This is where you verify users with passwords or two-factor login authentications. And then you have antivirus software where it scans for malicious activity. Now, as a fun fact, even your Wi-Fi password, that is a form of network security. All right, so let's talk about some common networking terms. So if you're diving into networking, you're gonna hear a few terms over and over and over again. So here's a quick glossary, the word bandwidth. This is basically how much data can travel across the network at once. You have what is called latency. This is the delay before data gets to its destination. You have what is called a ping, and this is a test to see how quickly you can reach another device. You have what is called an SSID or a service set identifier. And this is basically the name of a Wi-Fi network. You have what is called a MAC address. This is a unique ID for a network device. You have what is called DHCP. And this is a system that assigns IP addresses automatically. And then you have DNS or the domain name system. And this is like the internet's phone book where it translates names like google.com into an IP address. All right, so let's move on and talk real quick about some careers in networking. So is networking actually a good field? Well, it absolutely is. So if you're curious, you love troubleshooting, or you want a stable, high paying IT career, then computer networking might be for you. So here's a few job titles you can consider. First, we have what is called a network administrator, and basically they manage and maintain computer networks. You have what is called a network engineer. They design and implement complex networks. You have a security analyst. They keep networks safe from hackers and malware. You have cloud network architects. They build networks and cloud platforms like AWS or Azure. And then you have a help desk technician where they solve network and connection issues for end users. And plus, if you get some certifications like CompTIA Network Plus, Cisco CCNA, and AWS Certified Networking, all of that can help you get started and on your way to earning the big bucks in IT. Now we use networks constantly. 
And sometimes we use them and we don't even realize we're doing it. And so here's some examples of how that works. So if you're using a smart thermostat that connects to your phone, you're ordering food via Uber Eats, you're playing multiplayer games online, you're watching YouTube videos, you're backing up your photos to the cloud, or you're using Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Well, guess what? You're using networking. And without networking, our digital world would essentially fall apart. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. It's easy to take computer networking for granted. We just expect our Wi-Fi to work, our emails to send, and our YouTube videos to stream without buffering. But under the hood, there's an incredibly complex web of connections, protocols, and technologies that are working in harmony. And it's all thanks to computer networking. So whether you're casually browsing or considering a career in tech, understanding how networks function just gives you a huge edge in today's world. It basically demystifies the internet, helps you troubleshoot issues more effectively, and opens doors to high paying in demand careers. So the next time your Zoom meeting doesn't lag, or you download a movie in three seconds, just give a little nod to the champion in the background, which is known as the network.